it feels like this team is really close um, after you know, just giving up three goals over the last three games, a bunch of 1-0 losses. Um, how close does it feel, in your opinion, um, to getting a win? I mean, we've been knocking on the door this whole season throughout the first half of this, this year. Um, you know, we've been that close so many times. Um, but unfortunately, you don't get points for being close. And so each and every week I stress to the group, it's time to go back. We hone in on the details. We go back to the drawing board. We need to up the level. Um, you know, we needed that tonight, and it's the reason why we didn't walk out of here with, with some goals and hopefully some points. And then a big reason, possibly the biggest reason, that you guys were still in this game for the, the full 90 minutes was because of Mandy. Um, six saves tonight. How important is she to this team? Some excellent saves from Mandy tonight. You saw there at the end keeping us in the game. Um, we talked about having championship-level goalkeeper in order to win a championship, and that's going to be, you know, our eyes are set on that. And if she continues to do her job, um, that's half the battle. And, and the other half is then handling you know, our end of things in, in the final third and creating those opportunities for other goalkeepers to make big time saves. Because um, what she did tonight is not easy and it definitely kept us in there. Based on my past performance, I thought I'd write some things out here. So please bear with me. But, okay. And I'd like to get into your mind if I could a little bit. Because we're at a point in the season where You've experimented with positioning and tactics. And uh, as your time as together as a squad has lengthened, you have a larger data set. And so I'm really curious how much within all the systematically, systematic rotations and switch ups, how much you've seen the young players be able to use their intuitive and interpretive powers on the pitch within all of the systematic things that you have going on as a squad. Each and every week, we've added new layers to this team, whether it's new personnel, new tactical decisions, uh, different combinations out on the pitch. You've seen players play different positions for us. Uh, we've had injuries come and go. And so we've asked a lot of changes out of the group, and specifically a, a big change in all of our rookies, right? They're joining us from the NCAA, and they're jumping into the NC, uh, NWSL, where you know the difficulty and the competition is even higher. And so. Yeah, we, we're putting a lot of stress on this group, but that's what we expect in an expansion year. There are a lot of changes. There's a lot of trial and error. There's figuring out the right processes, how we organize things, um, you know, different tactical changes. And you're going to continue seeing that throughout the year until we get it right. Um, you know, I'm a coach that's going to to go down with the ship where I will never give up because we're going to keep pushing and pushing. Because um, at the end of the day, the goal for this team is to win a championship. and. If it's this year or in five, 20 years, you know, we'll, we'll keep pushing. Um, and I'm going to encourage my group to do the same. We keep our head up, you know, chin up, chest out, and, and we push on. And I hope this is a good follow-up to that. But you alluded to Allie coming from UNC. I'm curious when you take someone like her, and we, we could apply this question to any of the young rookies. Um, you could take low flow. You could take anybody. But I'm curious how you've been able to help as a coach amplify their natural positional tendencies with, um, and even with their ineffective natural tendencies, how are you able to kind of adapt them into this league and into your system? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, Allie Sentner's best position for us. Um, you've seen that she can be great on the ball, lethal shot, um, great in the pocket, dribbling around defenders, drawing a lot of players to her. Um, and it's now figuring out the next layer. How can we upgrade her shot so that it's closer to goal, that she's getting in you know, closer to the frame. Um, it's, it, again, it's a, it's a trial and error thing with a lot of our rookies. We're, they're just getting their feet wet in this league, and we're going to work as hard as we can to figure out what their best position is. And just last one for me, and then I'll pass it. Can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about Jimmy and Sam and what you hope to uh, bring into the squad with them coming in as assistants? Yeah, you never, you never want to have a ton of turnover within a season, and we've obviously done that through our coaching staff and assistants coming and going. Um, but I'm really excited for this next change. We've got two, you know, excellent people coming in and joining our staff. Hopefully, give us that little uplift and change of scenery, fresh ideas. Um, we've been talking to the group about this, like almost being a little bit of a reset for us. Uh, we go back to the principles. We restart. We get a fresh fresh look um, at that second half of the season. And I think adding Jimmy and Sam will be great additions to, this, to the squad. I want to single out Lauren because 
you've singled out her a couple of times for different things that she's done over the last couple of games, really kind of keeping you guys in it in a lot of ways. And she's played now multiple positions, multiple formations, that kind of thing. Uh, just what is it about Low Flow's game that makes her such a versatile, I think Mandy called her a utility player, and I mm -hmm. think that's probably the best kind of position to attach to her right now where she can play in so many different spots and, and still be effective. I love that you called her Low Flow. It is the nickname we gave her early on in preseason, and I'm glad it's sticking. It stuck somehow, yeah. I love it. Um, you know, every bit of credit that, that Low Flow gets is, is well-deserved. Um, she's a hard worker. She is a professional from the moment she joined our team. Um, she's a versatile player that will take on any job um, in any way and give it full 100% effort, and that's all you can ask. Um, we've required a lot out of her this year. You know, she's jumped in as a rookie and, like you mentioned, played several different positions for us, um, and she's handled all of those in stride. You know, tonight she had to go up against a Trinity Rodman, full team national team player, um, and she and she held her own. And the one thing about Low Flow is that she continues to show her aggressiveness, both you know in the press, um, but even out of possession. And that's what we're really trying to you know hone in with her and just keep drawing that out of her. Sorry, Amy. So throughout the season, you've talked about you know, wanting to build habits with your team, having them play the right way. How would you state the progress to this point of the season of what you're wanting out of them as far as building those habits and playing the right way, the way that you want them to play? I think we're seeing glimpses of what we want out of this Royals team. Have we put together a full 95 minute game? No, on both ends of the pitch, no. Where some games, you know, we do all the right things in our defensive and middle third. It's just that final piece, that final third that just doesn't, quite connect or click um, and it's just putting all the pieces together full 90 minute game all thirds of the of the pitch um, and again we, we know this is a process we're a brand new team with 26 different players from different environments um, that are trying to figure it out and gain, and gain chemistry and that doesn't happen overnight and so we will stick to the processes we will continue to develop those good habits um, and keep pushing on with this team because that's all we know how to do and then you know you've been in their shoes as a player can you talk about you know what the locker room is like right now? How, how are the spirits of the team as you guys are going through a tough stretch? Is everybody still you know on the same page? Are you still you know that cohesive group that you want to be? There is no denying that this group is in a rough patch, and we are getting knocked down over and over and over again. Um, but it's in times like this where I, as a coach, evaluate my team and say, well, who is going to step up the next day? Who's bringing the positive attitude to Monday morning's training? Who's showing up when it's dark and bringing in the light? And you know, it's, it's becoming clear that we have a team that wants to be cohesive. We have a team that wants to put in full effort. You see each and every game, we're, we're you know, inches away from, from getting that win. Um, and, and the team continues to put in that effort, and I'm proud of that. Uh, I still think that there's a next level to us, absolutely. And like I said, we go back to the drawing board this week. We figure out what those little adjustments might be. And we go again for another three points next weekend. Anything on the Zoom, Alex? Perfect. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. Thanks.